Hi everyone, welcome to the third video covering chapter 6 from your computer systems book. In this video we'll talk about the memory hierarchy itself. This illustration shows an example of a memory hierarchy. The smaller storage devices are at the top of the pyramid, while the larger storage devices are at the bottom. Notice that the devices at the top are the fastest and highest cost devices, and as we move down the pyramid from the top to the base, the cost and speed of the devices decrease. The top of the pyramid represents the CPU registers themselves, and data is retrieved from wherever it resides further down the pyramid. Notice that there are references to cache levels here right underneath the CPU registers. We'll be talking a great deal about cache memories throughout the rest of this chapter, but for now just remember the levels of the hierarchy that cache memories reside in, and that they use SRAM, or static RAM, as the physical medium, which we talked about back in video 1 from chapter 6. Now, information needed by the CPU registers is retrieved from level 1 cache if it's there. If not, we continue down the pyramid. Level 1 cache retrieves data from level 2 cache, which retrieves data from level 3 cache. After that, we have to dip into main memory, which is much larger than cache memories, and because of the cost involved, we need to move from static RAM to dynamic RAM to support the increased size in a cost-effective way. After that, we get to local storage devices such as hard disk drives and solid-state drives. And finally, if we need data that does not reside on the local device at all, we could go out to remote storage devices like web servers. So, let's talk about caches. In general terms, a cache is a smaller, faster storage device that acts as a staging area for a subset of the data contained in a larger, slower device. So, for each level of the pyramid on the last slide, moving from level 0 at the top, for each level K, the faster, smaller device at level K serves as a cache for the larger, slower device at level K plus 1, which is the next level down toward the base of the pyramid. Now, hierarchies work because of the locality we discussed in the last video. Because of locality, the data at level K tends to be accessed more often than data at level K plus 1, so the storage at K plus 1 can be larger, slower, and less expensive per bit. All of this comes together to create a hierarchy that creates a large pool of storage that costs as much as the least expensive storage toward the bottom of the pyramid, but serves data to programs at the rate of the fastest, more expensive storage devices near the top of the pyramid. Now we'll talk about some general concepts of caches. Remember that a well-written program with good locality has a high chance of referencing the same objects in memory multiple times. That means that we can put these objects most likely to be referenced often into the faster memory at a higher level of the memory hierarchy. In this illustration, we see the main memory partitioned into blocks. We can copy the data in block-sized units to the faster cache memory. The idea is that because of locality, if a program references data in block 10, we know that it's likely to reference block 10 again in the near future, so we'll move block 10 to the cache so it can be accessed more quickly. When a block a program needs is already in the cache and we don't have to move any data from the memory, it's referred to as a hit. When the block is not in the cache and needs to be retrieved from memory, it's called a miss. Let's take a look at both of these concepts in a bit more detail. First, we'll look at a hit. This one's pretty straightforward. Let's say that a program needs data in a particular block. It requests that block from the cache, and if it's already there, we have a hit. In this example, a program requests block 14, which is already in the cache, so we don't have to go to the memory. Remember, memory will be at the next level down of the pyramid, which will be slower than the cache, and we get the data to the program at the speed of the faster cache. Now, we'll take a look at a cache miss. This gets a little bit more complicated. So, let's assume that the program needs data in block 12. It requests block 12 from the cache, but it's not there, and we have a miss. Next, block 12 will be fetched from memory and placed into the cache. A couple things to keep in mind about how caches work are how it's determined where to put the information that's fetched from memory and which block to replace. Remember that we have only so much space in the cache, so when a block is transferred from memory, a block that's already there has to be removed to make room for it. The block that's evicted from the cache is sometimes referred to as the victim. Caches have 
different policies about deciding which block to evict. A cache with a random replacement policy would just choose a random block to evict, while a cache with a least recently used, or LRU, policy would choose the block that was last accessed further in the past. So in this example, it is block 10 that gets evicted, and right now we're not going to worry about what kind of replacement policy was used to make that decision, and becomes the victim, and block 12 is written to the cache in its place, and then returned to the program. Another thing to keep in mind about cache misses is that there are several different kinds of misses. A cold or compulsory miss occurs because the cache is empty. Obviously, we will have misses until we fill the cache with some requested blocks. A conflict miss occurs when a cache at level K limits blocks at level K plus 1 to a small subset of the blocks positions at level K. This is the placement policy mentioned in the last slide. This would mean that large subsets of the blocks in memory may only be allowed to be placed in certain specific blocks in the cache. One example would be a scheme in which block I from level K plus 1 could only be placed in block I mod 4 in the level K cache. A conflict miss occurs when the level K cache is large enough and could even have open blocks, but multiple data objects map to the same level K block. In the example here, where block I must be placed in block I mod 4 in the level K cache, we can see that referencing blocks 0, then 8, then 0, then 8, etc. would always miss. This is because both 0 mod 4 and 8 mod 4 are both 0, which means both of those blocks would have to go into block 0 of the level K cache, even if other blocks in the cache were unused. Finally, a capacity miss occurs when the set of active cache blocks is larger than the size of the cache. An example of this would be a loop that accesses the elements of the same array over and over again. The set of blocks containing the array is called the working set of that phase of the program. When the size of the working set is larger than the size of the cache, we get capacity misses because the cache is simply too small to contain the blocks in the working set. This table appears on page 614 of your book and gives some information on what kind of information is cached by various cache types and how long they take to access. There are several concepts here that we will be addressing in later videos, so if you're not familiar with some of the terminology, that's okay. The table includes some types of caches we haven't covered yet to demonstrate just how common caches are. So, to summarize what we've covered in Chapter 6 so far. In Video 1, we learned that the speed gap between CPU, memory, and mass storage keeps getting bigger and bigger. In Video 2, we talked about well-written programs taking advantage of locality, and in this video, we looked at the idea of memory hierarchies closing the gap by exploiting locality to create pools of storage with costs at the level of the slower, less expensive storage devices that can serve data to a program at the speed of the faster, more expensive devices. And that's it for video number three of chapter six. In the next video, we'll go much more deeply into different types of cache organization and how they work.